Hey there, folks, and welcome back for another video. I'm your host, Chris, for CDB. Thanks so much for joining me uh, again on this uh, Wednesday morning. Today, we're going to be using the Colonel, Colonel Conk. It's been a long time since I've used a strictly glycerin-based soap. Uh, the price on this, $3.25 at West Coast Shaving for 2.25 ounces, $1.44 an ounce, $1.44 an ounce, which is a great, great price on the scale. Again, glycerin-based soap, which uh, this one is almond. <clears throat> uh, and almond in almost every shaving soap smells like uh, cherries, more or less. Uh, scent strength on this, pretty good, about four to five. Um, and today we're also going to be using the Above the Tie. This is the Windsor um, H plate with a uh, Permasharp blade in there, which I've been enjoying quite a bit. We're gonna be using our Rudy Vey old TSC, Breast of the Gods. That has the original L'Occitane Plasson knot in it, and we're just gonna wet that. And and while I'm talking, I'm just gonna be uh, lathering up, lathering off the puck here a little bit, because we got a few things to mention today. Again, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, and we're just gonna Wow, I'm slinging stuff, <laughs> stuff all over the place. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention was the inspector, who I mention a lot on this channel. I'll throw his photo up there. Up there. Apparently not happy with me, you know, cutting my head many times. That's not good enough for him because he sent me a, a feather uh, SS. Uh, I don't know if it's a Camisori style or the regular, you know, um, straight razor style Chevette. And so I'll be using that soon and we'll probably cut my face. The last time I used a Feather Artist Club, I used the DX and I'll put a picture up there. You see that circle? That cut was on my face for a long time. And I got that cut when putting the razor to my face. And that is uh, with some of the Chevettes, or Chevettes, depending on how you want to say it, you can really, um, I need to add some more water to my brush. Um, you can really cut yourself when just putting the blade to your face. Those blades are so thin relative to a straight razor that uh, you really have to be careful. So we got a lot of lather forming here, but not a lot in the brush. It's kind of going everywhere but the brush, but we'll roll with it. I uh, also want to mention today <clears throat> um, a channel, highlight channel, while I'm loading off this. I didn't soak it, by the way. It's just normal. And I'm gonna take a lot of this stuff and probably put it on my face that's not getting up in this brush, or at least try to. Um, so the channel I want to mention today is Matty Lindholm from Sweden. I've been uh, watching his videos and enjoying, he shaves uh, with straight razors most of the time. Really nice guy. I was watching his video yesterday and he had a, light, a lot of nice words to say about another channel which I've mentioned previously. Red Island Shaver, Justin. Uh, he made a video the other day where, you know, he was sort of uh, just expressing some displeasure from, you know, just life. And, you know, I've done that in the past as well, as you know, but he's been faced with some, you know, some difficulties, having trouble with his vision. And he said he didn't want sympathy. And so Justin, no sympathy here, but we are rooting for you, just good vibes. And so that's what, I want to send to Justin. And I saw uh, Maddie's video and uh, he was, he had tried to print a Canadian flag because uh, Justin's from Canada, but ran out of ink on his printer. And I just thought it was a really sweet gesture. And I thought it was very cool. And so I wanted to mention Maddie's channel today. Super nice guy, seems to be. And so I wanted to mention his channel today. So go check him out. Um, Maddie Lindholm, and I'll put a link below and he'll be in my, you know, featured channel list. Looks like we've got an okay lather going here from this glycerin-based Colonel Conk. Very, very inexpensive. We'll see what sort of shave uh, it affords. Very, very nice. Uh, really good scent strength here now. Probably since it's on my face, more like six to seven. So, no problem at all. I don't know if there's much soap in the brush. I think it's mostly on my face, but that is okay. We can work with it. And we'll see how the above the tie does with our
Colonel Conk. Very inexpensive. And the type of type of soap that a lot of people probably just look down their nose at because it's not pricey enough and it doesn't have the fancy ingredients and so on. I don't, as you know. That feels pretty good. H plate in this above the tie, which is their, as far as I know, unless things have changed, their most aggressive offering. And it is quite efficient. Uh, and that soap's doing a, a nice job. We've got some residual slickness there. I wouldn't say it's the most residual slickness I've ever seen in a soap, but it's there. And while the lather is there, it's providing for a good platform, as far as I can tell. So far, anyway. But we'll see how it progresses uh, as the shave goes. One of the things I also wanted to mention was when it comes to opinions about quality of soap, about quality of scent, about all those sort of things. You know, I'll see these discussions where someone will talk about a soap and they'll go, this is really fine quality soap. It's just as good as X. And then I'll see somebody else go, no, it's not in the, it's not really in the, uh, in the realm of X soap. It's not that good. It's tier two. And when I see those things, <clears throat> my first thought is always, on what basis? What objective measures do we really have to measure the quality of soap? We can look at the ingredient list on soap and trust that the artisans, you know, put them in that order. And we can, you know, assume certain things. But do we really have a slickness meter where we can objectively measure how slick a soap is? No. Do we have a post-shave meter where we can measure scientifically on the face how good a soap performed and how what sort of post that it left? No. So when you talk about, you know, this soap isn't in that tier or that tier, it's 100% subjective opinion, all right? And it's very important. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I want everybody to understand that there's no authority when it comes to soaps or their quality. There's no one that can position a soap and say, yes, this is upper echelon and everything else is crap. That, that just doesn't exist. You have to consume the opinions of many people and really decide for yourself, ultimately. Don't just watch this channel. I'm happy that you're here. But I want you to go watch other channels too. And I'll give you a prime example. I love this scent. And I, to me, it was a citru citrus slap in the face, and I got the plum, and, and all the notes came out to me, and it was very citrusy. Uh, but I watched Sinatra Lennon, and he didn't care for it that much because he got an earthy, a lot of earthy uh, notes out of it. And to me, any earthiness just sort of rounded it, but predominantly for me was citrus, which I love. Two entirely different subjective opinions on a scent, and neither is right nor wrong. And so, whenever you see someone matter-of-factly say, that soap isn't in the tier of X or Y, you need to ask, on what basis? How did you measure? Where's your slickometer? That's a term that the inspector talked about years ago. If we had some really objective measure to measure how slick a soap is or how great it left your skin feeling. And the other thing, that a lot of people don't consider. Water, skin conditions, chemistry, um, the way things react with your skin, the equipment that you're using, the brush, the way you're, you're using it, the technique, all those things come into play. And so anyone who speaks in matter of fact terms about this soap is top tier and that soap is bottom rung it's still opinion. They might be right in your mind. You might agree with that opinion. But it's still opinion because we really don't have objective measures for soap quality. I mean, we can make, again, we can make assumptions based on ingredient lists. But I'll tell you, even that doesn't always tell the tale. Because people react differently to different ingredients. And for some, they might get an ingredient and like lanolin, and it breaks them out or it irritates them. So that's never going to be a top tier soap for that person. This is critically important. And this is one thing I want to emphasize is 
whenever you see anyone who sort of positions himself on authority on the quality of a soap without without also making caveats that, okay, this is just my opinion. And, you know, when they say, well, X soap isn't as good as Y, that's just all there is to it. They might be right, but keep in mind that's, it's in their opinion. We don't really have objective measures. We can measure cost by ounce, but even there, does that really tell the tale? Because you have some soaps like this, which is very hard. And I can probably get more out of it, even though it's very inexpensive, than a soft crope, for example. So even people can even take issue with my cost scale, because if I bring a triple milled soap out here, and I can get many more shaves out of that triple mill than, say, a regular soft soap or crope, they'd have an issue. But most of the soaps that I evaluate are soft, and so, you know, the scale tends to apply. I'm going to load a little more from the Colonel Conk here. Actually, the Colonel Conk, Colonel Conk is doing uh, fine here. Um, honestly, it's working well. I mean, I'm not having any issues with it, other than I didn't get enough soap in my brush. But that's okay. It's something that can easily be remedied. It smells good. It's not irritating my face. It is very inexpensive. It makes a good lather. It's glycerin based. It's still providing slickness, cushion, and the things that I need out of a shave. And so for the cost, I mean, if you do you take in consideration the cost, you know. So if something is $1.44 per ounce and it provides you with a perfect shave, how would you rate that soap? You know what I mean? You have to consider that. If a dollar forty four an ounce gives you a banging shave and you're like, this is perfect. Wouldn't you rate that soap pretty high? But most people, I'm sure, wouldn't rate Colonel Conk because it's glycerin-based. Or at least, you know, enthusiasts in our hobby that will tend to like more artisan stuff. They just sort of look down there, no, uh, this is Colonel Conk. But if it does a great job and provides you with an outstanding shave, and the cost is low, can you consider that? I think you certainly could. That I didn't have to pay much for this, but yet it's providing for a good shave so far. So I think that's not something to consider. And that is not a knock on at all soaps that have really nice ingredients. I'm just saying that you can have a very expensive ingredient list. And for some people, that's not going to work. So my recommendation and my guidance is whenever you hear people say matter of factly, this soap is better than that brand. Challenge them and say, on what on what objective basis are you drawing this conclusion? And then they're going to be forced to say, well, in my opinion, because your skin is not their skin, your gear is not their gear, your technique is not their technique. It's it's impossible, in my view, to conclude that you know when you're talking about, especially artisan soaps that are similar. Uh, that that one is just not in the caliber of, of X. To say that matter-of-factly and have it apply to every shaver, I just don't think that can be done. Everything uh, other than, you know, I report to you that this soap is, was 325 at West Coast Shaving and it's 144 an ounce. That's a fact. That can be proven. But what can't be proven is how slick this is or is not. There's no way to prove that. There's no objective way to prove it. So I think you have to keep that in mind. And whenever you see people, don't be afraid to say, on what basis do you make this claim that that soap is, is not uh, good for everyone? If they say, Now, if they say for them or my opinion, no problem. But if they say, no, that's not a tier one soap, period, then they're speaking for everyone. And, and I don't think any of us really have the authority to do that. That's my opinion. Because I see that sometimes and I'm like, you know, we can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for me. And so anyway, three good passes. Let me rinse. We'll come back with the post. Stay tuned. Now, all right, we are back with the magic made by which is theirs, which is. And I must confess, that was a nice shave. No creepers, weepers, cuts, irritation, bubbles, troubles. <laughs> Colonel Conk, 144 an ounce. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it works. You know, and I use uh, soaps that are 
a lot more expensive and they produce a great shave. But I also got a, a great shave from Colonel Conk. Almond, $3.25. Uh, you know, what could really be said there except for it was a nice shave. You know, it did what it was supposed to do. Is it enjoyable? Did it produce that silky, silky lather? I didn't really work it that much. Uh, but it did everything I needed it to do. It didn't, it's probably not as fun. Like it's not as sexy a soap because it doesn't, you know, it's just a, it's, it's your plain almond scent, but it did what it needed to do. Above the tie, H, which is pretty aggressive. The Colonel Conk provided plenty of protection for it. Really nice uh, razor. We had our Old School Plasson, Rudy Vey Custom, which was sent to me by a viewer, Tim Berger, years ago. Great brush that I'll always have. And of course, we had the Colonel Conk. We're gonna finish things up today with Sandpiper from Sterling. And I must say, I was watching uh, Jimmy from New York City's video, and I have to rescind my comments about Sterling. Uh, Jimmy is in fact the number one fan of Sterling. You, you wanna know why I say that? Because he has multiples of like black cherry, back, back stock. Like he is legit <laughs> the number one fan of Sterling. As I see it, I'll be, I'll take the number two place because I don't have multiples. I have a lot of Sterling soaps and aftershave, but I don't have multiples. So I gotta give it to you, Jimmy. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Please, uh, I hope you'll consider the comments that I've made today about subjective versus objective and, and you know, consume plenty of material. Don't rely on any one person for, for thoughts on soaps because it, it, it differs wildly and we proved it with this one. I loved it. Sinatra, lit, uh, Sinatra Lennon didn't and both of us are right, you know, and so we, because it's opinion and that's the way it goes. Anyway, thanks again for joining us. And I hope you will come again soon. Until next time, it's your shave, do it your way, and God bless.